So this is the next uh, practice set and it has uh, seven questions. Please do these seven questions in seven minutes. I'm scrolling it down and you can see the questions. Question number one and two, question number three and four, question number five, six and seven. In a cartel, why do firms have a strong temptation to cheat? So supposedly if you and I form a cartel and uh, we say that, okay, fine, we have to produce this much, this much. Now, let me just assume this, that you are a naive person. You will keep on thinking that I will produce what we have decided. But I am a clever person. And I deviate unilaterally from that output level. So what is going to happen? I will be able to produce more and hence get more profits. Right. So in order to get more profits, that is the very strong incentive. And how do I get more profits? By producing more. Assuming that you're going to produce the collusive output level, the cartel output level only. So each firm gains by increasing its output. Assuming that the other firms are going to uh, produce the cartel output level only. What happens when the firms in a monopolistic competition market earns economic profits? Right. Uh, so in case if there are firms in monopolistic competition who are earning economic profits, what do you think will happen? Don't you think this these profit levels are going to attract new firms into the industry? They will. So new firms will enter. And the total demand of the market will be shared among the old and the new firms. So what is going to happen is that the demand which was faced by the old firms, that is going to fall. अब अगर नई फॉर्म्स भी आ गई हैं मार्केट में तो वो भी तो मार्केट शेयर ले रही है ना तो जितनी डिमांड पहले ओल्ड फॉर्म्स के लिए थी अब उनको उतनी डिमांड नहीं मिल रही है सो न्यू फॉर्म्स एंटर लीडिंग टू अ डिक्लाइन इन एग्जिस्टिंग फॉर्म्स व्हाई डज अ मोनोपोलिस्ट हैव अ डाउनवर्ड स्लोपिंग डिमांड कर्व सी डाउनवर्ड स्लोपिंग डिमांड कर्व इज देयर बिकॉज़ ही इज द ओनली सेलर इन द मार्केट and his demand curve is actually the market demand curve right so uh, unlike unlike perfect competition in which uh, every seller is just a part of the entire market uh, um, and uh, in perfect competition in case of the firms want to produce more they do not have to lower the price but in case of monopoly if the monopolist has to produce more or have to sell more, will have to reduce the price. So its demand curve represents the entire market demand. For an oligopoly, strategy to be stable and self-sustaining, it means what? It means that it should be a Nash equilibrium. It should be self-enforcing. It should be a Nash equilibrium because no firm should have an incentive to deviate from that unilaterally. Then only it will be stable and self-sustaining, right? So in, in case if any firm unilaterally finds it is profitable to deviate, then he or she, I mean, that particular firm is going to deviate. So the, the strategy doesn't remain stable. The strategy doesn't remain self-sustaining. Uh, so Nash equilibrium is that there is no profitable deviation will exist, right? So for an oligopoly strategy to be stable and self-sustaining must be that oligopoly strategy should be a Nash equilibrium. Then only there is no profitable deviation exists unilaterally, right? Price discrimination is not always possible. That's true. So what are the conditions which are needed to enable the sellers to price discriminate? Sellers need to have market power. That's true. They should have some market power. Um, it must be permitted by law. So sometimes what happens is that law doesn't allow you to price discriminate. So condition two is also required. Arbitrage must be impossible or at least costly. So it should not happen that if I'm selling in the two markets and I'm selling uh, in one market lower than the other market, I mean, the price at which I'm selling in market one is lower than the price at which I'm selling in market two. So it should not happen that the customers in market one will start reselling to customers in market two. 
right? Reselling is not allowed. So arbitrage must be impossible or at least very costly. For effective price discrimination, the seller must know the relevant demand function, at least locally, yes. Right, so they should know what is the demand curve for uh, for uh, for the different markets, right? Uh, so uh, all of them are true. All of them are true. Uh, that's there. Okay, if the short run marginal cost of producing a good is twenty dollars for the first two hundred units, and thirty dollars for each additional unit beyond two hundred. So for first two hundred units, MC is only thirty. MC is only twenty. But the moment it crosses two hundred, let's say it crosses to two zero one. Output crosses to 201. The marginal cost of the 201st output level is 30. So it increases. If the market price of the output is 29, a profit maximizing firm will do what? Beta. When for the first 200 units, MC is 20. And I can sell it at 29. That's good enough for me. But for Anything beyond 200 units, MC becomes 30. I cannot increase the price. Price is set at 29. It's a, it's a profit maximizing, perfectly competitive firm. So what do you think I should be doing? I should be producing only 200 units because the moment I produce one unit more, I'll be selling at the lower prices compared to my marginal cost is going to be higher. So I should be producing exactly 200 units, right? D is a truck driver. His revenue is $1.5 per mile driven. But the faster he drives, the greater the risk of a speeding chalan. The cost of driving his truck for one hour at a speed of S miles per hour is given by this guy. E to the power S minus 50 by 3. To maximize his profit, at what speed should D drive? So what is his revenue? 1.5 into S. What is his cost? Which is given to you. E to the power S minus 50 by 3. So what is the marginal revenue? 1.5. What is the marginal cost? E to the power S minus 50 by 3. So at equilibrium, MR equals to MC. Hmm? At equilibrium, MR equals to MC. So you have 1.5 equals to E to the power S minus 50 by 3. No, I can take log of both the sides. 0.5. And log of e to the power k is just k. So it is s minus 50 by 3. So you can use this value. This is given to you log of 1.5. S minus 50 by 3. So s comes out to be. 50.41. This is the correct answer. Right? This is the correct answer. Right, beta? Do let me know how much, how many you were able to get uh, right. Thank you.